Hi guys, we are going to have a demo of a painting of a landscape in acrylics with me, Max and Grunin. This is a 40 by 48 canvas. Let's go. Here is my thumbnail sketch for this project. Uh, this is uh, drawn with pencil, uh, marked up with the marker. Um, my 40 by 48 canvas is a type of horizontal rectangle. And my plan is to have foliage of the trees up top here. There are the shapes and the distance between the trees and their placement is already figured out there's the horizon slightly above halfway mark and uh, the shadows in in the grass are uh, shaded in everywhere to create um, easy to understand overall mass of light and dark hi guys we are starting so here is what i'm doing this is um just a piece of cardboard and i got my paint acrylic paint on it i'm using white yellow red and black and the red is a, like a darker red or a magenta and that's all of the paints i will be using throughout the painting I got a, I got a rag, I got a brush, uh, a spray bottle, and a palette. I am uh, spraying the paint so that uh, I can dilute it and mix it easily. And I'm going to start, and I'll talk a little bit about what I'm doing once I do this. My goal is to create a, a, a surface that's painted, that's not pure white. You know, there is a, white represents extreme highlight and um, I would like to get rid of that. It's blinding, it's um, not balanced. So I'm wanting to set up a, a type of abstract, uh, uh, like nice looking background let me work on that for a few minutes and then uh, I will show you what it looks like um, once I'm closer to completion so uh, I am mixing paint I am using a brush that I like using it's not too big it's not too small I'm not spilling a lot of paint around. Um, my uh, my goal is to have a new a medium medium dark, not too light, not too dark of a of a surface. Uh, so it's fairly neutral. And I am pretty much playing and enjoying myself. Uh, painting with uh, with nice colors over a nice big canvas 
and I'm getting rid, my goal is to get rid of the white. Here we go. Mix a bunch of neutral, not too dark, not too light color. And apply it to your canvas. Nice and loose. There is no stress, no rush. We are building beautiful abstract surface that is enjoyable to look at and that doesn't have the uh, st stark contrast of white. When I am creating an underpainting, this is a painting that lives under the finished painting. This is an underpainting. When I'm creating this uh, really colorful, neutral, and lively ground, I am also getting into um, a work mode. I am spending time with paint, with medium, with my tools, with my uh, canvas, and with myself. So I am really warming up to doing the work. This is another value of uh, starting roughly like this and uh, not having the pure white or any one uh, specific color surface. It's uh, just too grand. It's too, mm, it's uh, maybe even intimidating. Maybe it's, uh, so you know, I am breaking the surface up. I am getting into the fun mode of painting. And within the next half an hour or uh, to an hour, by the time I'm finished this, I am a lot more likely to be warmed up and tuned in and not uh, intimidated or challenged by the big task. I am just going to do what I know and love doing. This is um, a very nice and painterly and vivid surface. I'm uh, just enjoying messing around with paint and applying it to this um, surface and the moving paint around. Spray, spray, spray with the spray bottle mix and uh, lively, joyfully, swiftly apply the medium to the surface. I am trying to not to make it too, uh, too beautiful, like too colorful. I want uh, more of a neutral feel. So I am mixing some gray, some black in, in with white and with yellow and with red uh, because the goal of this 
project is to move to the next step and to have mm, a wonderful mm, yet neutral painted surface to start with. It's quite joyful to take the paint to brush and to canvas. Uh, after, after a while, um, the, the inhibition is replaced with uh, pure fun, pure fun. Just like, there really isn't uh, much to, to worry about. Mm, right now and even ever 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 like there's no need to worry about what we're doing here This is a process that just, it, it makes me enjoy myself. I am a, I'm a kid playing right now. It's, a, it's very therapeutic. It's very therapeutic. And I'm also working my body. I've, I'm sweating, I am moving around, I'm playing. <laughs> So it's also a, a good exercise, maybe. Let's uh, let's see. So here we go, and I got my entire canvas marked up and decided in terms of neutral background. Let's have a look. And the next step is going to be to draw the scene just like we drew it in our thumbnail. So let's let's go to that. Um I am looking at my thumbnail sketch and uh, I got black paint out. It's okay if we don't see my face when I talk. I optimized the screen to show the painting, mainly. So let's start with the largest of information. It would be the horizon separating top from bottom. This is about a middle, about the middle there. So I know that the horizon in my sketch is above that, slightly above the middle of the canvas. And I can't even measure it, but it's, it's possible to just eye it out, use the eye. And then I relate that over to the other side here. And I see that I am starting to form a division of surface now i have a, a definite idea where my horizon is so i don't have to wonder and i will begin with the largest of the objects and i will refer to my sketch and i will mm, i have a an idea of course i sketched from a reference of a paint of a picture that i like let's let's do more of that Placement is important. I would like to stay close to my master plan. If I have a balanced drawing, it's only 
logical that I will have a balanced painting if I follow in with my plan. So I'm learning to be consistent and to create a good strategy and a good plan. Begin with uh, some of the largest shapes. Because once you have, we have these shapes in, it will be easy to find all other shapes that are smaller and that cluster around the big shapes. So I had this uh, diagonal tree in the front. I have here another tree. I sense, I got a sense with my brush, where is the bottom of the object? Uh, where is the top of the object? And I create a shape within that. And the shape of the tree each tree has a unique shape and uh, I am investing in creating a complex, organic, tree-like shape. Not just uh, an idea of a tree, like a cartoon, like a stick with branches. No, an actual portrait portraying like we're investigating we're really looking at the what tree is like In order to uh, get uh, complex quality out, uh, it's good to slow down and uh, craft each object slowly and carefully. I will do that for a little while. I'll be transferring the drawing over to the canvas. I will tell you a tip if uh, if you if you are having trouble moving the paint over the surface that means that there is not enough water in the in the paint or it's the same with oil any medium mm, cut it add water um, 
and if you have too much water then you're gonna have uh, things dripping and uh, you will uh, create uh, spills and drips everywhere so you find a really nice balance between the medium Um, I am uh, not struggling at all with paint application. It's just so buttery. It's just so wonderful and flexible and easy to apply. If, uh, it's joyful to apply the medium. Like butter. It's butter. I am mixing yellow with black and with a bit of white I'm adding some red so we're only using black white uh, red and yellow and uh, I'm creating dark uh, kind of brown green colors and this process is called blocking in I am laying in big blocks of paint primarily concerned right now with laying in the shadow mass mass is a large quantity of something the large quantity of shadow is a shadow mass my method of paint application is broad and painterly i am not spending too long on any area at all i am rather swiftly moving through the mass of shadow within a particular area right now i am focused on the top foliage within the top of the trees and i am using yellow black and white to come up with these um, wonderful looking greens I uh, I want to have um, a bit of a muted palette right now. I don't want to have uh, very vivid or saturated colors just yet. So I am carefully carefully sticking within um, neutral, not too vivid of a palette. Here's my palette. It's fairly small and I am moving colors towards the center to produce these variations of different types of um, brown greens or grays or purpley browns. And so a um, neutral palette with neutral um, subtle green. I am locating where else does the shadow mass exist and I'm just going through the whole thing um, meticulously bit by bit um, figuring out my entirety of the shadow mass and I'm taking it throughout the canvas and I'm working over existing colorful kind of neutral background so um, there is a subtlety to this there's no 
dark um, white and light and dark contrast it's it's really nice and easy to manage in terms of uh, subtleties and subtlety of cont contrast I'm going to take time and uh, uh, just continue working building up the shadow the mass of shadow within my canvas this is how it's going right now it's really helpful to have a thumbnail sketch and a photo reference for later nearby so i can look up my my visuals at any time and i'm just just like uh, following following my own lead I came up with the project I set the guidelines and I am uh, following through with that it's a it's a systematic um, task oriented process it's really helpful to stay calm, to drink water, to take healthy breaks, and uh, avoid any stress related to your project. I am here to enjoy using paint on the canvas. I am here to enjoy learning about painting this is not a stress ground so i'm i'm just uh, trying to boost your boost your uh, self esteem and interest i got the interest in this As I am painting, I am saving the some of the previous areas. You know, maybe I like how some of this previous background area is interacting with the new addition of dark green. So maybe I'll save it for now. It's a nice looking little area. I definitely want to keep my drone elements like, you know, so that I know where they are the trees and such all of this for now is resolved with a brush or with brushes but we will get into a palette knife action later on, closer towards the end, to create these three-dimensional painterly brush strokes. And I have a, a little chair close by, so that if I'm working on the bottom portion of the picture, I'm sitting down. That's like, yay, I, I can rest for a little while. Let's see. Oh wow, there's, there's a whole lot of this dark green or just a mass of shadow down below here according to the sketch. And I can kinda map it out right away like that yeah and then I can just like set up the darks there and I'm I'm really loose with the application uh, it's uh, I'm not covering the entire surface 
I'm leaving areas so I see through. So it's it's like uh, general and uh, kind of rougher portion of the process. This is uh, blocking some information in, and then we're gonna see uh, what the result will be like. So there there's really no need. There's really no need for perfection. What is perfection? Who knows what's perfect? The up above guys or girls or unicorns? I don't know. I don't. I'm not that. I'm just uh, playing here with pain. So uh, there's no perfection here. Just the process of paint application. Let's stick with that. And this is where we at already. Well, guys, notice that notice that all of the areas, big areas of dark uh, canyon. If there is something happening there in terms of darks, so we can see something uh, far back in this area, in the background area above the line of the horizon there is also greenery and a uh, mass of shadow however it's located far away and if you go out or if you look at a photo look at a landscape notice how far away objects are a lot lighter and often are they have blue and purple in them they're colder in uh, color palette so i want to set up the background mass of shadow and foliage not as dark as the objects uh, in the foreground so it's going to be a few tones lighter maybe a little bit grayer a little bit more on the blue or purple side it, it is still a green do you see right there it is still a green however it's it's not as vivid it's not as dark it's not as contrasty as the one as the kind I was using in the far in the close up. So, yeah, properties of the background, just wanted to mention to you. We, we are thinking more and uh, doing less. Uh, so, we're figuring stuff out before we um, start messing around. And carefully, slowly, I am. Check, check, check. I am uh, taking those areas off my list, you know. There is my background greenery coming in. You see how there is... Uh, so I'll, I'll work through that a little more and set it up a bit more. Well, let's see how this works up close. Um, I mix the paint a little bit. And I find a variation of the kind of color that I'm using, like in the area of greens and uh, of like a grayer greens and you know then I I bring that back to here and I um, carefully set up that background property and uh, I create a broad brush stroke I can draw or paint uh, diagonally vertically 
I can go and bring that background within the foreground area, cut through, cut back a little bit. And uh, all of this depends on the reference, what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a landscape that I have chosen to paint from a photograph. And that's what you would be doing with your attempts. You will um, create a project where you, you will attempt to paint a landscape based on the choice of your preference. Or you will choose, let's say, to paint the landscape that I am painting and follow in with all of the steps. And so... And then you refer to your reference. You are looking at the picture that you're wanting to invoke in paint on your canvas. And you're tracing with your eyes, with your observation. Oh, I see there is a a kind of a greenery far back there and I will initiate that with this uh, overall broad start. I wash the brush in between um, colors so if I want to retain purity and clarity of the next color that I'm going to use I really want to wash out this brush and wipe it it is also possible to use another uh, fresh brush for the next uh, thing that we'll be doing uh, let's try to set up a little bit of light mass. We've set up some overall information for shadows and we already have some mid-tone built in there from previous layer of underpainting. That whole abstract start. Now let's start bringing some light or not highlight, not full on finished light areas, but just some it indicate a bit of light coming in and you know let's see so I mixed white with yellow and a little bit of black and I am placing brush marks within the area of light in my painting I have a reference that I'm looking at what's my reference is uh, my favorite uh, photo of that I've chosen for this project of a landscape that I wanted to paint and I also sketched and located uh, the optimal view of it for the picture I composed it within this type of frame Here's a little bit of light starting to come in. Carefully placing a little bit of, of a lighter color of kind of green, kind of gray-green with some white. All of this is uh, starting me off with my area of light. And so there is a mass of shadow, there are some mid-tones, and then there is light. And these masses are all interacting to create form, to create overall image. Uh, 
Uh, guys, please note uh, light there. This is the area that's uh, going to be the far away see-through light in the far back of a forest or of, of, of a landscape. So I am indicating that right away, kind of broadly, you know, there's not going to be any finishing done just yet. But um, I would like to right away have a sense of the total of all of the contrast, of all of the space that I set out to create. So this will kind of guide me. I am giving myself a kind of a lead that this is where my highlight and lightest area, like a focal point, uh, something that will set up the depth for the painting is going to be located, so I place that in. Everything uh, will be constructed and built up progressively. Today we started our project. I started my demo today. I added some information in several places. I am now coming back to the elements that I already worked on and I'm adding more information to them. The trees in the foreground. Right now they look all uh, sketched in and just uh, black, kind of, you know, roughed in, roughed in. So I would like to bring other colors into that area. I am going to build up the properties of the shadow within the element of the tree. I will use gray, purple, browns. I will use dark greens. I will use red, several, uh, several darks that uh, live, that reside, that are visible within the tree. Oftentimes we see that a photographic reference kind of takes the color away from the shadow. We could be looking at a picture and the tree would be like really, really black or dark or dark gray. And that's not good for, for the painting. It, what works for the photograph doesn't work for the painting. So uh, we are creating a lot more complex color surface for the shadow property within the object than, than we're seeing in our reference. And with a bit of lighter color of the same color scheme, you know, the browns, the grays, I'm just uh, indicating a little bit of lighter feel to one side where there's a bit more light coming in. So there, little by little, I'm building three-dimensional notions into the painting. I'm getting some red and yellow and a little bit of black and I'm getting this red brown that's like really really nice looking but not overly too too saturated and I'm taking it to the surface of the tree 
And my strategy is to do a little bit of painting with the color I just used and then go back to the palette and get another variation of it. And then use that next, next to that. This is called a painterly approach where, you know, we, we, we are not painting a wall with one color of the decor that we've chosen. We are learning to really break it up break the surface up in many vivid diverse variations of the color and let's use a bit of a, a green in there as well and you know i love how black and yellow makes a green hey eh? look and it's not um overly saturated green it's like kind of swampy I call it, I call it nature green. Let's use nature green. And, you know, yeah. Maybe it's even too light right now, but we'll adjust everything. We'll be working on this for a while. A painting like this usually takes 30 hours, maybe. Maybe it could be more to complete. And you see, I, let's say I place a brush stroke and I'm, you know, move it around a little bit, but not too much. I'm looking for a painterly surface. So um, I'm leaving the evidence of the process. It's a really lively movement, like a dance of the brush over the canvas. And I want to keep that. I want to have a vivid, lively surface forming. We are already getting into the tree trunks and um, all of them, all of them are going to get um, modified or they're gonna move along as we move along with our painting so if if this was just the black and roughly drawn in then that's going to get complex color of the shadow properties you know darker colors that we're choosing to paint the trees with and uh, a little bit of that information is gonna come in everywhere so fairly lively you see i am um uh, i'm not about to finish anything i'm not about to say that oh this is like you know this is gonna be done today no this is gonna <laughs> we're gonna need to, i'm gonna need to work a little harder than that to do what i'm wanting to do with this and we'll see what that's see that's going to be So, and there is a method that I use, and it's a type of uh, philosophy, it's like a painting, uh, visual art philosophy that, that I have a knowledge of, and uh, this is, uh, has to do with arranging color within a painting. Let's say if I used green here, or this type of green here, I need to use it somewhere else so that it's harmonious and balanced. So if I'm using a bit of a red, brown or gray, purple, brown uh, elsewhere, let's take a look at how I can bring that into to this dark green area. And this has uh, almost uh, nothing to do with the reference that we're using so this is purely based on a painter painting theory this is where knowing theory and having had the experience to test drive it and see how it works so this is a painterly distribution of color within a picture yeah and you see how once that gray purpley kind of brown came in, 
it's more harmonious with some other areas within the painting so it's it's like hello i live there i'm a brown gray purple there and i am reflecting a little bit here purely paint early notion let's go over a recap what's been done today we had a, a sketch out we conceived a plan using a photograph that uh, I you know let's go talk I will talk like a first person so I had my favorite photograph uh, picked I studied it through uh, sketching it and figuring out uh, what colors are gonna be used there um, then I prepared the canvas and got ready to start um, went away from a white surface and um, set up a, a kind of neutral colorful kind of really not too vivid of a background an underpainting then uh, elements of the picture were drawn in with black with black paint then I painted in a very blocky and broad kind of approach it's called blocking in you see these like you know, squares and blocks and chunks of, of surfaces that are decided and uh, i looked for a unified notion of a shadow mass throughout the picture i cared about making a background a little bit lighter and uh, less uh, prominent than the foreground we looked at how I uh, put in some a bit of a mid-tone and a light and then I talked about setting up that vivid in kind of a highlighted area there far back then addressed the trees over again and then looked at a complexity of color and how let's say if i used purple or gray in one area then i was keen on finding where else i can use it and i used it there and so the project is uh, underway and there is no speeding up and i'm really thorough about everything thanks and uh, I will see you soon continuing.